Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, with a super quick technique for you today um, of how to get a batik look with your background stamp. So here is an example on watercolor, here's an example on a tag, and uh, I'm going to show you how to do this on a tag since I figure more of you guys have cardstock hanging around the watercolor paper, plus it's cheaper. Alright, so I get this um, rubber stamp and it is by Lost Coast Designs, and I've got these, um, these are just paintbrushes. These are Elmer's Paint Tastics, and they have some liquid watercolor in them. You can use watercolors, you can use um, ink, you can use markers. Um, you just want it kind of juicy, so if you're using markers to color, you're going to want to spray it with some water before you stamp. Um, these are really fun because they're they're <laughs> cheap, and you can get them in the kids' arts and crafts section at your... Um, at like your craft store. I got these at um, Staples. They used to, uh, not Staples, I'm sorry. Uh, Sam's Club. They used to sell a set of 15 of these for 10 bucks. And I figured, well, even if the paint's junk, I'll empty it out and use it for water brushes. I'll wash them. But um, I really liked it. And then I just refill it with my liquid watercolors from Blick Art Materials because, you know, those are also quite inexpensive for what you get. Um, and I'm going in, I'm going to use a little bit of this um, teal. You could use reinkers as well, but you'd want to water them down a little bit. You could use food coloring. You could use, you know, any sort of watercolor or dyes. See, I do. You just want it pretty juicy. Now, originally, I wouldn't really want to use these to color a stamp directly because it would kind of want to beat up. But I find the more that I use it, and probably because I'm washing them off, washing the um, stamp off in between, I notice it does um, stick to the rubber a lot better. So if you're having a hard time using markers to stamp or doing any sort of those mixed media techniques on your stamp, um, try washing them in some like dish detergent um, or some stamp cleaner because chances are they just have a little residue from the, um, from the factory. The only thing about these, you do have to give them a little squeeze. I notice there's like a little um, kind of cartridge in here that kind of traps the ink. I guess keeps it from coming out too quickly, but I'm thinking about actually experimenting and taking the cartridge out of one and seeing if I prefer having my ink come out a little bit faster. All right, so I'm letting my colors mix and blend. I've only got three colors. Um, I have to be careful because as the pink and um, yellow mix, you know, I get kind of a, a coral, and as the uh, blue bluish green and pink mix, I get kind of a gray. So I just have to, I want to make sure I don't over mix it. Now I'm going to grab a tag over here. These are just uh, manila tags from Paper Mart. I'm just going to set this right on there and rub over the back. Notice that I've got the, this is the Paper Mart tags have a little reinforced laminating strip on one side, so I have that to the back because that's going to resist the ink. And the stamp's not quite big enough to do the entire tag, so what I'm going to do is just press that front area that didn't get stamped right in there. And there, that's what you get. I think that looks just really, really pretty as is. I'm going to get the bottom a little bit too. I guess I missed a little bit there. There. So that's that's really batiky looking to me. But um, on this example, I actually was playing with it a little bit and I went over it with some of the colors to kind of fill in some colors. I think this looks like um, kind of like the tropical print you might see on lawn furniture, and I actually really like that look, so yellow is really good for glazing over these colors. So if you want to do that, you can. You don't have to. But I just think, you know, we're, we're in the middle of a cold winter, and I just think this looks like summer, and I think it's um, a really fun technique. You can try with the background stamps you already have. If you want this background stamp, I will leave a link under the video in the video description, so you can go find that over at Lost Coast Designs. Tell them Lindsay sent you. I do appreciate that. It's so nice when you tell a company that you, uh, you learned about their product from me. I am on the design team at Lost Coast Designs, so I always want to see the companies that I design for do well, especially since they have such wonderful products. So, I mean, you can just really play with this, and you can have fun painting, and even if you don't know how to paint, or even if you feel like you don't know how to paint, because I'm sure you can paint. I'm sure you can, but sometimes you just need that little, little uh, something to hold your hand as you go through it. So, you know, it's a fun technique. I hope you try it. Try it with what you have. Um, try it with watercolors or regular watercolor markers. If you don't have this, just give it a spritz of water first. And there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.